All right, so we are going to do a, we're going to start off with a demo today. Uh, and uh, this will also be your question of the day. And so uh, what's going to happen is I've got this giant ring sitting on the ground here. And I am going to uh, give this bowling ball a kick right here uh, so that it starts rolling around the circle. Uh, and so its velocity is going to be along the edge of the circle, like you can see here. Uh, and eventually, it's going to get to a point where the ring ends. You can see that the, the ring stops right here. And so the question is, what path is the bowling ball going to take uh, once it gets to this opening in the ring? Uh, we've got four options for you, A, B, C, and D. Uh, what I would like you to do is pause the video and just write down the letter that you think is the answer in your notebook. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. All right, um, I'm going to talk briefly about sort of the reasoning behind each one of these. Um, and so I'll go through the reason, uh, sort of the general reason someone might pick uh, any one of these four. Uh, and then if that changes your mind, I'm going to have you change the letter you think is the answer, the letter you wrote down. Um, and so uh, we'll start with uh, D. Uh, so if you've ever been in uh, like a car as it's going around uh, a curve, uh, which is sort of like what the bowling ball is doing here, it's going around a curve, uh, you might have felt that you get thrown up uh, against, or you pushed up against the outside uh, door of the car. Uh, and if you weren't wearing a seatbelt, and if there wasn't a door, you would get thrown out of the car. Uh, and so here, we've got the bowling ball going along, and it gets to a point in the ring where there's no longer a wall. And so that's sort of like if the door on your car disappeared, uh, and that'll cause the bowling ball to just get flung uh, straight out to the side. Um... B, sorry, let's do B next. Uh, so the argument for B is basically that the bowling ball is going along, uh, and the ring is the thing that's making it go in a circle. Uh, and so once the ring goes away, uh, it's going to stop going in a circle, and it's just going to sort of keep on going uh, sort of you know, the way it was going. Uh, and then C is a combination of the two. So if both of those factors are in play, uh, the ring is what's making it go in a circle. Without the ring, it's not going to be able to stay in that circular path. Uh, it's going to kind of keep going forward a little bit, but we also have the ball uh, kind of moving outwards uh, because there's no longer that outside force. If the two of those play together, uh, then what we should get is some sort of spiral moving outwards. That's what path C is showing. Uh, that it's both moving forward but also moving outwards because we no longer uh, have that ring uh, preventing it from flying out to the side. Uh, and then A uh, says that, well, the bowling ball was going uh, in a circle, uh, and we know objects in motion uh, remain in motion. Uh, and so since it was going in a circle, uh, the ring has already uh, gotten it to go in a circle. And so once the ring goes away, it's still going to keep going in a circle until something else actually stops it from going in a circle, uh, which is how we would get answer A. Uh, and so if uh, one of those things seems sort of compelling or makes you realize there's an issue with your reasoning, um, go ahead and change your answer that you wrote down. Give me just a second to do that. Uh, it's important that we commit to an answer, uh, because actually having done that, um, so uh, if we realize we're wrong or we realize we're right, it helps solidify the knowledge better than just thinking about it, because you can hold a couple ideas in your head. You have to write one down, you have to commit to it. All right, so at this point, you should hopefully have a final answer for which one you think it is, A, B, C, or D. Uh, let's give the bowling ball a kick uh, and see what it does. So here we go. Going along the edge of the ring, and follows path B, the straight line. Uh, so we need to talk about why that is. Uh, so first off, uh, there was something that was sort of right about all of the things that uh, I mentioned for why A, B, C, and D could be right. Uh, the idea behind A, that an object in motion is going to stay in motion, that's absolutely true, but remember, what, uh, that's sort of the easy way of saying the first law. Really, the rule is that objects in motion uh, will stay in motion at the same velocity until some force changes them, until acted on by some outside force, so we have some unbalanced force. And so if we think about what the bowling ball's velocity is at any point, so imagine I'm the bowling ball, 
or maybe be easier to, to show with this. So, uh, when the bowling ball is moving, uh, the bowling ball has a velocity. Uh, and so here we have a curved path showing its velocity over time. But at any given point, the velocity is just the speed it's going plus the direction it's going. Uh, and so at this point, the bowling ball's velocity looks like this. And then as it rolls forward, it's always just moving forward, right? And so when it gets to the edge, uh, the ring is absolutely uh, the thing that is making it go uh, in a circle. Uh, and when the ring is gone, it is no longer going to go in a circle, and it is just going to maintain a constant velocity. It's going to have the exact same velocity it did right here, the last velocity it had. And that velocity is going to stay constant and cause it to just continue going in a straight line at a constant velocity, which is what Newton's first law says objects will do until something makes it stop. The ring was actually stopping it from going at a constant velocity in a straight line. Um, so what about D? Uh, this idea that when you're going in a curve, uh, it feels uh, like you're getting thrown up against the outside edge of the car. Uh, well, we know the, uh, the bowling ball is only going in a circle because of the curve, because of the ring. And if we think about the ring, the only force that this can exert on the bowling ball is going to be some sort of normal force from the edge of the ring, because we've got the edge of the ring touching the bowling ball. The ring doesn't want the ball to go through it, and so it's going to push outwards with a normal force. And so when the bowling ball uh, is, for example, right here, the ring can only push with a normal force, pushes outwards and away from itself, which is going to be like that, uh, which um, is towards the center of the circle. So this dot here is right at the center, and just from the way geometry works, if you're always pushing uh, straight outwards perpendicular to the edge of the circle. Uh, that force is always going to be towards the center. Um, and so uh, we can actually introduce a vocabulary term here, the idea of centripetal. Centripetal just means towards the center, so uh, along a radius towards the center of the circle. So right now, this arrow is showing the direction of the, uh, the centripetal direction, which is the direction that the edge of the wall must be pushing the ball. And when you're in a car going around a curve, the exact same thing happens. You're in that curve uh, going round and round and round, and you can feel the door of the car pushing you this way. And all that's, so you, sorry, you can feel the door of the car, uh, if this is you, pushing you that way when you're going around a curve. Because if you didn't have the door pushing on you to make you go at a curve, your body would keep on going in a straight line like this, well, the car follows this line, and you would stop being in the car. You would wind up in the ditch or whatever the car was avoiding by turning. And so it's super important that the door of the car pushes you towards the center, just like the ring has to push the bowling ball towards the center here, uh, to make your body go in a circle and stay inside the car as it goes around the curve, or make the bowling ball curve and stay inside the circle. Uh, but your brain gets a little confused. Uh, from your perspective, when you feel this force pushing you towards the center, uh, because when you're in the car, you don't normally think about that you're turning. Uh, normally, the only way that you would suddenly wind up uh, getting pushed by your door that is normally to the, uh, in this case, like to your left, would be if all of a sudden something pushed you to the left and pushed you into the door. But really, uh, what's happening is that your body was trying to go in a straight line, and the car started curving, and so instead of something pushing you outwards into the outside door, uh, the car started to move around you, and the outside door uh, came up and smacked you and started pushing you towards the inside. So, this idea that it might follow D, that something is pushing it towards the outside, and we're finally going to be able to fly out of the car, um, is, is faulty. Um, because there's nothing actually pushing you straight outwards. Uh, it's just an illusion. It feels like that. Uh, sometimes uh, that is referred to as uh, centrifugal force. Um, 
but that's uh, not, not a real force. There's nothing actually pushing you towards the outside. It just feels like there is. Uh, and so since there's nothing actually pushing you out of the circle, nothing's trying to push the bowling ball out of the circle, it's not going to follow path D. It's also not going to follow path C, which required that concept. It's just going to stay at what its last velocity was, which was B. Um, now, we already introduced the idea of centripetal, uh, which is one important vocab word we need. So centripetal is towards the center. Uh, and that is the direction that the force from the ring uh, is pushing the bowling ball. Um, there's another word we can use to describe the direction of line B here. Uh, and so to understand that a little better, let me get the bowling ball moved over to this last point in the ring. All right, so at this point, uh, the last instant, the last little bit of the ring is pushing the bowling ball towards the center, like that. Uh, so this is, uh, it's being pushed centripetal. Uh, but we can see that, I don't have a second arrow. I'm just going to replace this with a regular meter stick, so we can just sort of see that centripetal direction. Um, but that is going to be pushing the bowling ball centripetal. But the direction of the bowling ball's velocity, the direction it's actually moving, of course, is this way, along path B. Uh, because at this particular moment, the bowling ball is going along, and the direction it's moving at this point in the curve is that way, along path B. Um, and you'll notice that there is, between these two directions, a right angle. So those are perpendicular to each other. So this centripetal direction uh, is perpendicular to something else. You might know from math class that the radius, which is what this is lined up with, is always perpendicular to what we call a tangent line for the circle. Uh, a tangent line, uh, you might uh, remember uh, from our motion unit uh, and talking about graphs and stuff, uh, is a straight line that just barely touches the edge of a curve without crossing it. And so if you look at what the tangent line looks like for the curve, uh, as we come around and get just to the very edge of the ring right here, I'm going to hit my hair up. Okay, so the tangent line for this part of the ring is right there. That's the only way to put a straight line that is perfectly straight and barely touches the edge of the ring. Uh, and we can see that is pointing in the same direction as this. And so the direction the ball was moving is tangential. So following this path that just barely, this straight line that is just barely touching the edge of the curve without crossing it. Uh, and it turns out that a path that is tangent to a circle, okay, so this line and this line, the direction of our velocity, which is tangential, uh, is, for a circle, always going to be perpendicular to our radial, dire to our, to our radial direction or our centripetal direction. Uh, and so uh, we can use the idea of, of radial and tangential from math class, but what we're generally going to call them in this unit is centripetal and tangential. So centripetal towards the center, tangent following the edge of the circle. And we put a little right angle sign on here. And we can see that that centripetal direction is always perpendicular to the tangential direction. Uh, and so while something is in a circle going round and round in a circle, uh, the direction of its velocity at any particular point is going to be tangential. But the direction that the force experience it experiences that is making it go in a circle is going to be centripetal. Uh, but one other thing that must be centripetal, uh, we know if the net force uh, is towards the center, uh, which is what's going on with the bowling ball, all of the other forces that are on it are going to cancel out. Uh, that means that the net force on the bowling ball is going to be going towards the center, which means the acceleration is going towards the center. Uh, and so we have the idea of a centripetal acceleration and a centripetal net force acting on our object going in a circle. 
uh, and that and it has a tangential velocity. And when we combine those two things, something that has a tangential velocity with a centripetal force, that's going to make it go in a circle. Um, one last thing, uh, just just the idea of like why does this make it go in a circle? One thing you might have noticed about the bowling ball uh, as it was going around the circle, I was not changing speeds. It was going at a constant speed, but its direction was changing. Uh, that means that the bowling ball, let's see as we watch this. So as the bowling ball goes around, it has a constant speed. But its velocity is not constant because its direction is changing. And so we've got to have some way that something can change velocities. And by definition, something is uh, accelerating, if its velocity is changing, in a way that doesn't cause it to speed up or slow down. Remember, acceleration is just a change in velocity. If you are getting faster, you are accelerating. If you are getting slower, you are accelerating. So you can accelerate from a stop up to some higher speed, or you can accelerate from moving to a stop. If you hit the brake, you are accelerating to a stop, because any change in velocity is an acceleration. Well, here, we have something accelerating to go around in a circle because its velocity is changing. Uh, and if it's going to accelerate to go in a circle uh, at a constant speed, uh, we know normally if something is moving forward, right, like along path B here, if you apply a force in the direction something's moving, okay, so imagine we got our object going along point B. Well, imagine if we pushed it forward. Okay, so if I push in the same direction it's moving, if I apply a force, this represents a force in the direction we're moving line B, that makes it get faster. And we don't want it to get faster. If I apply a force in the opposite direction it's moving, so that's still tangential, but just in the opposite direction, that's going to cause it to slow down. And we don't want it to slow down either. It can't speed up or slow down as it's going around in a circle. And so like when it's right here, and it still needs to go in a circle, because okay, the ring is still pushing on it, so it's still going to go in a circle while the ring is pushing on it. The ring can't push it forward because that would make it get faster, and it's not going around the circle and getting faster. The ring can't push backwards on it because that would make it get slower. It's got to push some direction that's not forwards or backwards. And the only direction that's not forwards or backwards, uh, or has even a component forwards or backwards, is going to be at a 90 degree angle to the two. There is no component of this arrow that goes forwards or backwards. So this is a way that we could apply a force uh, that is perpendicular to our velocity so that it's not going to make it get faster and not going to make it get slower. But if we are applying a net force, it has to accelerate. And if it's accelerating, its velocity has to change. And so if it can't get faster and it can't get slower, the only part of the velocity that could change is the direction, because the magnitude can't change, only the velocity can change. Um, so just like, for example, like we, know we can't push it this way, because that has a component both going in the direction the ball was moving and towards the center. This would also cause the ball to get faster. The only way to explain the ball going at this constant speed as it goes around the circle is if our net force winds up being towards the center, because that's the only direction that's not going to make it get faster and not going to make it get slower, um, but still cause it to change its velocity. Um, and so uh, we're going to, this unit is all about uniform circular motion, uh, which is exactly what we just showed here. Something going, uh, uniform circular motion means at a constant speed, but in a circle. Uh, and we will uh, uh, later, we'll talk about how to change speeds due to non non-uniform circular motion. But for this unit, we're going to start off just talking about circular motion. So going in constant speed, but not in a straight line. If we're not going in a straight line, we're changing directions, which means that we have to have a net force, which means we need to have to have an acceleration. But we can't accelerate forwards, we can't accelerate backwards, so we have to accelerate like sideways. Uh, and for an object going in a circle, since the direction it's moving is tangential, the direction of that acceleration and the force that makes it do that has to be towards the center of the circle, which we call centripetal.